Hello, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. So today we are going to talk about those things that unfortunately are getting some people in some hot water, if you will, with people around them as well as God himself. And that is when they run after other gods to seek counsel, to get a bit of advice from the dark side. So they use various cards, games, symbols, relics, chants, you name it. I just want to know like what the future holds. I just need to know like what my deceased ancestor said. I just want to know what my future husband or wife is going to look like and where we're going to live and oh my I just need to know if I'm going to win the lottery before I pay, play this, you know, number. Or I just want to know if I'm going to live long, okay? Just giving examples of the types of things that people ask God and God doesn't give them any answer. Or they get part of it. But uh, let me go and talk with this lady because I know she knows a lot about Or let me go and sit in this circle. Or if I buy this and I shake it three times, hmm, I know years ago it worked for me. Maybe it'll work again. Okay. So Leviticus 20 and 6 says, if a person turns to mediums and necromancers whoring after them, hmm. I will set my face against that person and will cut him off from among his people. From the scriptures, it doesn't sound like it's okay. Okay. (laughs) Matter of fact, that's pretty harsh, but so true. God is going to cut some people off sooner or later. I don't understand why I can't seem to get along with these people. I don't understand why I keep having these nightmares. I'm just tormented by my thoughts during the day. Oh, I hear these voices that tell me to do some strange things. Oh, this weird image showed up and I was so scared. When I laid down in my bed, something creeped up and laid itself on me. I've never experienced such a thing. I was so frightened by it. Mm -hmm. The doors that people open up. Some individuals, they know exactly what they're doing when they gift people these things. Mm -hmm. One particular woman, I told her, I said, where did you get the gift? Because I saw something in the spirit. And she said, my sister gave it to me. I said, oh, huh. I said, your sister doesn't like you very much. What? What are you talking about? I said, have you had any issues, any run-ins with your sister? And then she started thinking about some things. And she said, oh, yeah, we did have. I said, oh, and then you get this so-called nice gift. I said, that gift has a history behind it. And where exactly did she get it? Oh, on her trip to Africa. And then she came back with it. And she knew I liked African pieces. I said, well, whoever she bought it from, that individual serves other gods. And whatever spirits are connected or associated with, they're warring spirits. Ever since, you know, she gave me that, you know, me and my husband argue more. I mean, it's it's like just things will just start happening and we just start arguing. Mm-hmm. She said, thank you for that. So she went on and she put it up. She didn't remove it from her house. Now, the instruction, according to the Lord, was she was to remove it from her house. So one day we we're talking again. I said, did you remove that idol out of your house? She said, no. I said, I thought you were going to remove it. She said, I just put it in a closet. And yeah, I mean, we're still having our problems. And now uh, she said her sister has said some kind of statement to her and they had a falling out. I said, you need to remove that or return it 
back to her. So she said that that's what she was going to do. And then eventually she did. It took her a while, but she did. Look, you want to play? You want to, you know, assume everything's going to be okay and all right. I'll just put it in the basement. I'll just put it up in the attic. I'll just put it in the back part of my closet. Mm -hmm. Somebody does these sorts of things. And instead, what you need to do is give it back to the person who gave it to you. Or you sell it to individuals who you know love those sorts of things. I remember the Lord spoke to me and said, give Satan back what is his. But I looked around. I said, I don't have nothing. That's Satan's. I said, yes, you do. What? And I'm opening up my closets, my drawers. I'm looking into some stuff. And it turned out there were some cards that I had collected back when I was a child. And they were stickers. And they were colorful. And they were fun. But the Lord said, there's a dark history. And I didn't know quite what that dark history was. And then he called my mind to remembrance of children who had been abused. And I said, oh, and how there are various groups that, how shall I say it, that they, they bridle or they train brainwash recruit teach these children to do some things that the majority of society would be vehemently against for their own personal pleasures for their rituals and occult practices so what we were laughing at as little kids and thought was fun and cute was really dark and so I was to give Satan back what was his and it took about after getting that word from the Lord it didn't happen instantaneously where the individual who was into collecting all sorts of strange relics purchased the items because you can very well sell items give items away just so long as they're not in your presence if you no longer want certain books and you know that those books cost you a fortune and you know that God is moving on you to get rid of those books give them to the witches give them to the mediums sell them to the witches sell them to the mediums the necromancers you see Nothing wrong with it. You were once wayward in the faith. You were once believing lies, but the truth has set you free. And for some of you all, it also gave you a little extra money because you needed it. All right. You give Satan what is his. That's a word for someone, just as it was a word for me. Deuteronomy 13, 1 through 5, if a prophet or a dreamer of dreams arises among you and gives you a sign or a wonder and the sign or wonder that he tells you comes to pass. And if he says, let us go after other gods, which you have not known and let us serve them, you shall not listen to the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams. Anything that I give you should be leading you back to the one true God. I should not be sending you down a path serving all sorts of gods all over the place. You understand? So for some of you all, if I'm always leading you back to God, the one true God, then I'm in the right place mentally, spiritually. But if I start talking about all these other gods, and I'm given all sorts of names and you've never heard of these. Something happened. <laughs> Something went left. Okay. The brain, the mind, the spirit. Something's off. Okay. 
Now, if I say that about myself, right, then you know that somebody around you who could be saying some things and doing some things and leading you somewhere else is in the wrong. I don't care that they got a good track record of telling you about other things. If they keep sending you away from God, they're an agent for Satan, a child of darkness. Doesn't matter the titles. A lot of people say, well, that's my mother, my father, my sister, my brother, my cousin, my aunt, my uncle, my grandmother, my grandfather. Doesn't matter. Let us go after other gods and let us serve them. Get down on your knees. This particular statue has always brought me much luck. Oh, this one right here. I got this when I visited Egypt, Africa, you know, the Mediterranean, Asia. And ever since I brought this thing in, I'm telling you, it's nothing but good things that have been happening. And then eventually the good things run out. Mm -hmm. I remember when money candles was a big deal in the family. They were lighting those money candles up left and right, putting them on their uh, mantles, putting them on window seals. Yeah, and their candles, right? Mm -hmm. And you forget about a candle. And next thing you know, you got a fire on your hands. You see, I don't need to burn a candle. I don't need to put some kind of fragrant fragrance all in the air one particular woman i knew that we were on our way out in terms of our little conversations when she started talking about burning this and burning that through the house i said i never had to do anything like that i just simply go to the one true god and then i wait for him it may take days weeks months what have you years but that's what i do why well i gotta go around the house and burn a bunch of stuff well, that's how you ward off. I said, how about we just pray? We go through our house and you see, and that's when I knew, okay, she's tapped into something. And when she tapped into that something in her interesting prayers and burning of, she opened up a portal of some spirits that were guising themselves as light. Okay. One true God. Not multiple gods, not all sorts of lights, okay? But that's what Satan guys guises himself as. He shapeshifts. He does all sorts of interesting things. He can make a body raise up off its feet or off its back and float. And some of you all would be like, oh, that's amazing. I'm going to serve that person. I'm going to do so many things. Oh, because that person, they're a star. Mm -hmm. and the bible warns us about gazing at stars mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> there's those that think that they're like the stars that are in the sky they're far from it and stars were not meant to be worshipped so we got some people who idolize human beings not statues human beings and anybody who replaces the one true God, they eventually are removed off their post. Okay? That's why he doesn't want us to be glorifying human beings and putting so much weight on human beings because, hey, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. He knows the day, the hour that we're going to be leaving this planet. So that's why we keep sending you back believers, righteous believers, honest believers, not deceptive believers, not believers serving all sorts of gods. We are to send you back to the one true God. If you are wayward in the faith, the one who put that breath in your body, that heartbeat that wakes you up, the one who causes the sun to rise and the sun to fall. We don't worship the sun. You see the one who puts the moon in the sky and then when the moon isn't one to show itself. <laughs> God is responsible. There's no spirit or spirits that's in control of nature. It is God. He was here long before us and he will be here long after us 
and our silly little opinions and thoughts and well, what about? You shall walk after who? The Lord your God. For the Lord your God is testing you to know whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. So why did this even show up? Why did the idol be gifted to that sister? Why did someone buy those cards and give them to someone? Why was someone tempted to go to that circle and get a word? And that circle has nothing to do with the one true God. Matter of fact, they denounced him a long time ago. You see, like, why? Why do you do this? And why, why does God even allow this sort of thing to happen? There's the answer. For the Lord, your God is testing you to know whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul. If I love him with all my heart and all my soul, I'm going to walk out the room when they show up. I'm not going to sit there and say, okay, do tell, girl. Tell me <laughs> what's going to happen in the future, you see. I'm not going to sit there and open up some type of ancient book. And start reading the words over and over again to open up a portal. Because I know that those paths are leading me away from the Lord. You shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice. One voice, not many voices. You shall walk after the Lord your God, right? So you've been walking with me for some of you all for years. You've told me that. You said, look, I've been listening to this channel for years, right? So the question is, okay, so who is this God that she talks about, right? Okay, so then you start listening to the scriptures. You listen to the wisdom. It lines up with some things that's going on in your life at the right time. Okay. God must be on the move. I give honor and praise to the one true God. You shall walk after. We're walking after. If we're walking after, that means who's leading? The Lord, your God. So we are walking after the Lord, your God. And what are we doing? We fear him. Right? It makes sense. He shows up. His angelic presence if you will spirit his spirit you were caught with your hand in the cookie jar yeah you got every right to fear him you were doing some ungodly things you were down on your knees and you were praising and worshiping an idol you are a part of this celebrity circle and that celebrity circle and you thought they were something special because they could do some interesting little twitches and raise their little, you know, body up and they could, you know, wave their hand and do some odd things. Mm. Lord Jesus. Uh-uh. No, no, no. I got to have a heart for the one true God. I have to, I have to allow him to lead me. You shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him. And now this is tough for some individuals. I know because we all go through this and keep his commandments. I don't know his commandments. Look them up. Google God's commandments. Some, you know, some it's like, uh, I don't have, you know, some of these things that the commandments mentioned. But but, you know what God's thoughts are with the various examples that are provided in the scriptures. So if. He warned people about certain types of behaviors and things back then. All you got to do is plug in the types of things that we're doing nowadays and know that he still is against the things that we do. Right. So we keep his commandments and obey his voice. And you shall serve him. Who are we serving? We're serving the one true God. And you shall serve him and hold fast to him. What does it mean to serve him? If he is telling us to do something, we serve him. If we are praising him and worshiping him and waiting on him. And once again, being obedient, doing what is asked, we are serving him. When we don't forsake him because, oh, somebody I don't agree with. I never liked. And why does God do this? And why? That's your issue. Okay. 
I'm holding fast to him, despite people saying whatever they went through, how they, you know, can't stand the Lord, don't like the people of God. That's your issue. I mean, he's not going to keep me from serving him or talking about him. You know, you're not going to knock me for my blessings because you want me to jump on that depressing bandwagon of grief and upset and mad at the world. And, you know, let me just fire off a paragraph of every insult I can come up with. You know, please. <laughs> I'm ashes to ashes, dust to dust. I'm a mere vessel, a mortal. You know, I, I'm i not going to fight up against what God put me on and how people are saying that. They're being free from all sorts of people, places, and things. God's after them. That's his audience. Like I said, I'm a mere vessel. You see? But that prophet or that dreamer of dreams, listen to how scriptures deal with prophets and dreamer of dreams. So you want to be that one that wants to serve all sorts of idols. You want to follow all sorts of people, places, and things. Scripture dealt with these folks. But that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death because he has taught rebellion against the Lord your God. So wait a minute, wait a minute. So if I sit here in this circle with these people and I listen to them and, you know, hey, I just want to keep the peace and I'm just going to go ahead and just this moment, you know, listen to their gods and the things that they do and then participate in these acts you mean to tell me that these folks are on that path toward death sooner rather than later okay you know what nah never mind because see huh, guilty by association no thank you but that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death because he has taught rebellion against the lord your god who brought you out of what you, who, what was your land of Egypt? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Somebody says, wait a minute, the Lord brought me out of that abusive relationship. Come on, I can put my hand up. Wait a minute, the Lord brought me out of that land of Egypt. What was that land of Egypt that I went through? Oh, Lord Jesus, come on, somebody's divorced today and they are free and they're excited and happy. I'm not trying to go down that path of getting around witches and warlocks and mediums and spiritists about some man or some woman that's supposed to come into my life in the future. Jesus. God brought you out of what? Oh, alcohol, addi alcohol addiction, drug addiction, sexual addiction, nothing but the Lord. You are where you are because of God. Hallelujah. And you want to go against him? You want to teach others to go against him? Mm-hmm. Don't tempt God's hand. I got to tell somebody talking to these young people about all your idols, all your relics. Jesus, somebody shut your mouth. Confess your sin and repent. Guilty. On what count? Teaching rebellion against the Lord. Guilty sitting in circles among individuals who claim to be of light, but they were really of darkness. Come on, that's somebody's guilt. Guilty. So confess your sin and repent and let's keep it moving. You see, God brought you out of whatever your land of Egypt was or still is. And he's moving. He's working it out and redeemed you out of the house of slavery. This is real for some children who are now adults treated like slaves. This is true of some individuals who come to America to escape slavery. This is true of some individuals who are still slaves as we speak because their minds are so far from the light that could get them out of their sexual, spiritual, mental, physical slavery. But for some of you all, you've been redeemed. You were brought out of to make you leave the way in which the Lord your God commanded you to walk. That's what some of those spiritists and mediums and witches and warlocks and wayward in the faith did for some individuals. You don't want to be on that path straight to a fiery hell being put to death. The Lord says, so you shall purge the evil from your midst. I'm purging the evil. 
Sometimes the Lord will allow Satan to deal with his own. It's dark. It's disturbing. But it happens. Don't worry about this. Because we got a lot of rules over here. And these rules aren't meant to be broken in our little circle. So the witch, the warlock, the medium, the spirit says, I'll take care of this. We take care of our own. You going about your way. You're free. For some individuals, we apologize for what we've done. Who mm -hmm. Satan is. But we're going to deal with the one who broke the rules. Broke the oath. We don't even subscribe to that. We don't even go down that deep of a hole. And so they take care of their own. Mm -hmm. God has a way of using those that you may not agree with or may not like. And oh, woe to them. But they can deal with their own. The medium will deal with that medium. The necromancer will deal with that necromancer. Mm -hmm. The idol worshiper will deal with that idol worshiper. And meanwhile, all you have to do is just leave. Hallelujah. Denounce and renounce the idol worshiping, following after other gods. Deuteronomy 18, 9 through 12 says, when you come into the land that the Lord your God is giving you, some of you all move and relocating. You shall not learn to follow the, abom the abominable practices of those nations. There shall not be found among you anyone who burns his son or his daughter as an offering. Some don't do that, but they will have abortions as an offering. Mm -hmm. There shall not be found among you anyone who burns his son or his daughter as an offering. Some will put their own children on an offering. type of uh, design of some sort whether it's a table or a mound a hill in honor of their false god okay whether they symbolically do away with the child or they actually commit the act there are those that are investigated for that sort of thing. There are those who have been locked up because of this sort of thing. This is the dark side. There shall not be found among you anyone who burns his son or his daughter as an offering. Anyone who practices divination or tells fortunes, right? You drive by some building and inside there's a woman who's getting paid. Or a man who's getting paid to tell fortunes or interprets omens or a sorcerer or a charmer or a medium or a necromancer or one who inquires of the dead. And we saw some of the celebrities in mainstream media having that sort of thing done. And this heightens around October, kind of dies down a bit in November and then picks back up as the satanic holidays show up once again anyone who practices divination or tells fortunes or interprets omens or a sorcerer or a charmer or a medium or a necromancer or one who inquires of the dead whoever does these things is an abomination to the lord that's not me saying it that's me reading scripture and because of these abominations, the Lord your God is driving them out before you. You still want to participate. You still want to encourage other people to participate. You still want to watch those interesting movies about this sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And here we go again. Leviticus 19.31. Do not turn to mediums or necromancers. Do not seek them out. And so make yourselves unclean by them. I am the Lord your God. Someone's being warned. And the last scripture, Mark 13, 1 through 37 says, And as he came out of the temple, 
referring to the Lord Jesus. One of his disciples said to him, look, teacher, that wonderful stone, what wonderful stones and what wonderful buildings. Okay. Right. You could be traveling, right? Oh, honey, look, look at these stones. Look at these buildings. Ah. Oh. And Jesus said to him, do you see these great buildings? There will not be left here one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. Just imagine you're walking with somebody in a foreign land and you see all of these things and you're admiring them. And then that person says, oh, they're all coming down. They're going to be destroyed. But they're so gorgeous. They're so beautiful. Hmm. And as he sat on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter and James and John and Andrew asked him privately, tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign when all these things are about to be accomplished? And Jesus began to say to them, see that no one leads you astray. Lord Jesus. If God shows you, if the people of God tell you, and yet someone says, that this is nothing more than conspiracy. This is nothing more than predictive programming. This is nothing more. And that, of course, is something that in media, every now and again, we see a rise of certain subject matter, right? Because it distracts you from agendas and things that are going on behind the scenes. People who individuals idolize. When I grow up, I want to be like seated at a table, making some decisions. But what is to come is destruction. And the way you see business being conducted in your neighborhood, nationally, internationally, and the types of relics that you've long seen for many, many years, you saw some of them topple over during the last crisis. More is yet to come. We've long admired this great general, this chief, this president. More statues toppled over, all a part of, yes, Great reset, yes, wow, somebody knows a thing or two about what happens behind the scenes and how they, you know, spin media and change things and all of that. But don't let that distract you, distract you from God's destruction, Lord Jesus. Don't let someone tell you the types of things that you sit comfortably so much, in fact, that you start running after other gods as you see the destruct destruction come. Because that's what people do when in crisis, when tragedy happens, when you don't understand, you start gravitating to all sorts of faith. Uh huh. Maybe not you, but some individuals did this sort of thing. And they were running here and they were running there and they were saying, oh, I don't know what ha what's happening. You know, the sky is falling. And so Satan says, this is a good opportunity to start putting out all those quotes from the great <laughs> ones who have come before these mere mortals, the spirits, if you will, that are still very much alive and well. So let's go. Let's start spreading our news. And some of it wasn't even faith based religion religion no some of it was just an idol that everyone admired saying that what you see isn't what you see what you hear isn't what you hear and do as we do and then they had to come up with all sorts of things to quiet those that were angered upset bitter because oh looks like your little secret potion didn't do what they said it was going to do Folks who wanted to live longer and they had all sorts of experiments done on them. They're in their graves now. Those who were preaching all sorts of ways to be enlightened. Mm, they're in their graves now. Individuals who said all sorts of ungodly, unrighteous types of things and wanted masses to follow after 
their so-called masters. Hmm, where are they now? People tormented by their thoughts can't even articulate sentences correctly because they're on drugs. Why are they on drugs? Because they're running away from what they saw, what they experienced, what was supposed to help them, what they had capitalized off of for years in order to be the great one that all of you all listen to the music and watch the movies and just put those posters up and thought that this person was something of a genius the lord he reminded me he said many of them allowed all sorts of spirits to enter their bodies in every single orifice and as they allowed the spirits to take over they became nothing more than a whore for satan there's the dark truth they became a pawn in the game that feeds you whatever their masters tell them. A puppet, if you will. Pull on those strings. Puppets recruit puppets. Pawns lead pawns. And then there's always someone at the top that laughs. That says, see, see, oh, see how those fools run. Sometimes you got to be appearing like you're going along for the ride but sometimes that's not what's happening god will move you into circles to topple over buildings but not in the literal sense some of you all that is your job <laughs> knock down buildings but for others the building is just the symbol the system the process behind the building the spirits that have led people down the dark paths that is what needs to be destroyed and this is why some individuals don't want to be a part of any type of faith whatsoever because they know that some people use faith to turn people against one another to create division to make slaves out of people but once you move on a path that god himself wants you to be on and he shows you truth in all its forms not just in some box, some building. <laughs> you are enlightened in a way that God wants you to be enlightened, the one true God. Not in the way that Satan wants you to be enlightened. Because his type of enlightenment is deceptive. It tricks people. It makes people think that they're their own God when in fact he's pulling your strings. <laughs> And he uses all sorts of signs, symbols, colors, people, places, and things to get the job done. And then ultimately, what does he do? He kills. He steals from you. He destroys you. So stay on that path of destruction long enough. And you cut your lifespan short. I thank you as always for taking time out to listen. You've been listening to YouTube in Enterprise 7. Feel free to like, subscribe, comment. We do welcome giving on this channel. Thank you to those who have been so kind as to give to this channel. Blessings to you.